Pack a bow, my friend And don't forget to pass the plan Pack it up, my friend And then we'll ride up and we'll smoke in the ashes in the end Pack a bow, my friend Ask me that blend, would you? Welcome back in, y'all. It is good to see you. Uh, been a couple weeks. I've been really busy. And, um, by the way, <clears throat> like, who is it? Um, well, there may be some of y'all that got some good spare time out there to kill. Someday I hope to have that. <laughs> Today, y'all, we're going to go ahead and show you the progress and the finished products of the pipe wraps that I made for Mr. Dennis and Mr. D. Hicks, who I've recently found out, uh, and I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, his name is Danny. So, uh, we got those to show you. Um, and all the progress through that I'll show you pictures and then in the end uh, we'll get to uh, showing you in person here right here in front of the camera uh, and then we'll get those sent out hopefully this week maybe tomorrow I don't know oh <clears throat> all depends but when I can get mama to go to the post office she does those errands for me um, that way I don't have to that's good and I appreciate her for doing that um, anyways, y'all, I am smoking today my um, Morgan Bones, and this is a bare bones pipe, and it's a Dublin, basically, um, and I like the Dublins, y'all, I really do like the Dublins, mainly because of their V-shaped bowl on the inside, what I mean is the bowl goes down to um, a pretty shallow, skinny area, so all of your tobacco just kind of you know, makes its way down there without you having to do anything really special to it. Just a little tamp here, there. Um, and it's good. So I really like the Dublins. Um, and just for the Morgan Bones, now, I talked to, uh, I talked about it, I don't know, a number of videos back, that they make pipes that are just um, bare wood. They haven't been stained yet. They haven't even had a coat of, of carnauba wax or anything put on them. Um, this was one of those. And so it was a nice, fresh, briar look. Uh, but now, over time, it has taken on this brown color. Um, and I like it, y'all. I've slowly watched it patina into this color um, on its own. I didn't do nothing. Um, I don't even think I put a coat of of wax on this yet but i'll probably get to the point to where i should because i think she's gotten as dark as it's gonna get y'all in the pipe y'all is um bayou morning not a big deal you all know that um very few tobaccos in my lineup i'm not one of those guys that has a bunch of tobaccos to share with y'all um i take comfort in the few uh that um, I smoke. I'm one of those security guys. I like just the security of a flavor and a tobacco that I know will be consistent with my palate. Some of y'all like to, you know, break it up, surprise your palate with a new flavor and all that good stuff. And that's good. That's good. Um, it's nice. Of course it is. Um, I tend to stay with what I know. And it's the same thing when I go to a restaurant, y'all. I'll go to my favorite steakhouse if I'm not eating at home. And we do that maybe once a month, if that. Um, and, you know, I'll get me a nice ribeye. Um, T-bones are nice and sirloins and all that. They're all good. They're all good cuts. But ribeyes, a nice ribeye, y'all. No matter what they got on special, I'll still order a ribeye. Um, it's my favorite. It's my security. It's my go-to 
uh, when it comes to steak. And the same thing goes for, you know, my tobaccos. Um, I don't have many to, to show for because I have those that I like and I stick with them. Because I know each and every bowl, every single day, is going to be to my liking. Now, can you imagine starting off to work and you decided to take a, a blend that you weren't quite sure about and you'd have to spend the whole day with that blend and that would kind of tan your hide for a little bit uh, until you got home when you could finally grab a blend that you wanted. Um, well, I don't take that chance personally. Um, I, I, like I said, I, I go with what I know and I enjoy the blends that I do have. I hope y'all are enjoying a good blend right now. Um, let's get into showing you uh, the, the, the progress and the finished product on those pipe wraps that I did, y'all. Let's head on over to the web. Or uh, what I call the web. It's my area where I show pictures. Anyways, I, took, I, I think I took a decent amount of pictures here, y'all. We're going to go ahead and just kind of reacquaint ourselves with the pictures that I've shown in, in a previous video. This here is Mr. Dennis's start of his wrap and the materials that I was using here. Now for both wraps, for Mr. Dennis and Mr. Danny, uh, we decided to use a suede. Um, no veg tan leather, no printed leather, no nothing, just suede. Um, and I believe it's a 3-4 ounce suede. So uh, dark browns, reds, and this tannish brown. It actually looks a little darker uh, than it shows in the picture right now. But uh, Mr. Danny and Mr. Dennis will find that out in person when they get them. Um, like I said, I decided to make them 21 inches. Of course, they fold into a tri-fold. Um, and there I go ahead, I, I cut out two. Now these, like I said, are the pictures that I think we've already seen. Um, and of course, there's Mr. Dennis's flap, the flap that's going to go over his pipes. Um, with a nice little rope stamp here at just above his name and I decided to go ahead and slowly fade uh, the color of the stain uh, leaving the middle portion of Mr. Dennis's name uh, a little brighter a little easier to see um, with the outside edges nice and dark and I used my um, airbrush to do that love that thing y'all here I am sewing it on We'll see many pictures of me sewing here um, as we go through this. And I think we've seen a lot of these already. Let's continue on. Uh, this is the buckle area. Uh, sewing that on. I told you about the tape. Yep, so these are pictures we've already seen. And there's the buckle area there. I think about right here is where I left off. And then, of course, I showed you my picture. Um, here's where we're getting ready to sew it all together, I believe. Yeah, getting ready to sew it all together. The burgundy and the tan looks really nice. And like I told Mr. Dennis, we brought some of that dark brown uh, on the outside to kind of give him that uh, feeling that we're getting a lot of those colors in there. Um, and it turned out good, y'all. I, I like them both. And we'll see that. Here I am sewing the uh, handcrafted by the Johnny P uh, in place. And sewing some of the pockets in place right now with the zippers already done. I believe, yeah, the zippers are already done. Now on Mr. Dennis's wrap, I felt the need, uh, I don't remember why, but I felt the need to go ahead and put a double stitch on his pocket areas. It may be that I sewed too close to the edge. I don't know. But I did do a double stitch, as you can see um, right there. There's a double stitch on the pocket areas. Um, this, I believe, is almost done. Mr. Dennis's wrap uh, here is almost done. I'm kind of getting a feel for it there. I'm setting it out, looking at it. I decided to go ahead and put some pipes in it and see how the flap pulls over and snaps in place. Um, now, I don't know what kind of pipes Mr. Dennis or Mr. Danny uses, but um, I threw uh, a nice billiard in place and uh, a bent apple in place just to 
see how they would both fare in their rather large pipes versus, you know, a smaller medium or smaller pipe. Um, just to make sure that it would handle a larger pipe and it they handle them just fine. Um, this is just showing you how I did the uh, belt area. Um, I have these templates right here, as you can see, acrylic templates, which allow me to make a nice, clean, uh, pointed cut area right there versus trying to draw it out and cut it out. It's nice to have these templates around um, when you need them. And there I am getting ready to sew the belt portion of it in place. And there it is in place. <clears throat> I'll, whoa, I don't know why that happened. Let's pull it up right there. So you can see the belt portion all buckled up. And right here, I went ahead and kind of loaded up the wrap. This is Mr. Dennis, uh, his wrap. Loaded it up with things that you, I thought, <clears throat> you know, what most average uh, smokers would, would load up with. So I got a tin of tobacco on the one side. <clears throat> now, Mr. Dennis says he carries a smaller form of a tin. They call them pocket tins. He gave me the measurements. And with the measurements he gave me, he should be able to put two of those pocket tins in uh, the tobacco section of this wrap. Um, per the measurements he gave me, I made it and I actually, just uh, coincidence, I had uh, one of those pocket tins uh, and set them side by side in the, in the wrap and closes up and does just fine. So I'm really happy about that. Um, and down below, you know, I loaded up some pipe uh, cleaners, a tamper, a lighter, uh, the couple pipes, and uh, folded it all up and seen how it would be. Um, it folds up real nice, buckles up real nice. Um, right there, you can see that. And even room uh, within the belt right there to, to cinch it up a little tighter or loosen it up if uh, Mr. Dennis wants to put more in it you know bulk it up even more and that's possible here um, as I gave him room on the belt there it is kind of standing up sitting right there little side view of it another side view buckled up okay and so right here is that was Mr. Dennis his his wrap is complete uh, we're going to go on, and um, basically, Mr. Danny's wrap is built mm, almost the same. It's got some different um, areas that make it, of course, like I said, y'all, I don't, I don't really make uh, cookie cutter items. Um, each item could have the same essence of the whole project. But they're going to have different things, uh, some similarities, but there'll be two different wraps, as you'll see as we progress uh, through the pictures here. So here I am cutting out. I, I had an idea um, for the flap on Mr. Danny's. I wanted to do it a little bit differently here, and I'm cutting that out, and I'm playing with a piece of leather right there, um, which will go on the flap, which is back here in the picture. Um, so that's why I snapped that shot. I just snapped random shots, y'all. And um, I'm just going to talk about them. Now, this this right here, y'all, I was kind of, kind of excited about this. Now, like I told you, sometimes as I'm building a project, I may sit back and scratch my head and think, you know, what? I, I could do something there. I, I could do this. I could do that. Whatever it is, it all of a sudden hits me. Now, Mr. Danny didn't request any special size or anything. Um, and he basically just said, you know, do your thing, Johnny. And I said, okay. Um, but so I don't know if Mr. Danny carries tens of tobaccos. I don't know if he uses just a Ziploc baggie and puts some, you know, loose tobacco in there. Um, maybe he uses a tobacco pouch. I don't know. But um, so, you know, normally I would build it where it would handle at least, you know, a large tin of tobacco. So something that we're all familiar with seeing, it'd be something like this, 
which these are about four inches by one inch, uh, about that size if I had to guess without getting a tape measure. Um, I've been aging this one, y'all. If you ever have Peterson's Irish Flake, it's kind of like uh, Old Dark Fired. I've been aging this one. She, this one here is about two years old now. And someday I will bust it open. Um, but yeah, so I didn't know um, what Mr. Danny uses. So I thought to myself, maybe I'll make Mr. Danny a tobacco pouch to go with this wrap. And as I thought about doing that, I thought, well, wait a minute. Where I would normally make a pocket for a tin of tobacco or whatever, um, why don't I make that where he could put loose tobacco in there? So it's almost like I, it's a built-in tobacco pouch in the wrap. And I thought about it and I said, wow, I, I like that. I like that idea. So as you can see before, those of you that have seen me make my tobacco pouches before, uh, I use a liner on the inside as to not dry out the tobacco. Um, now, the one I use, y'all, well, which is right here, um, I use this one, and it's lined just like you see there in the picture. Um, I will say this, that after a couple days, your tobacco does dry out, um, a, you know, to a point. I personally don't mind that. I know some people like, they don't like a really dry tobacco and it kind of defeats the purpose in some blends of course um so but if you're like me and you're a heavy smoker <laughs> you don't have to worry about that tobacco staying in there too long to get to that point um so that's just a little disclaimer there but the liner does keep it from touching the leather maybe gaining any flavor from the leather um an odor uh I don't know y'all i but it's a good idea to separate the tobacco if you're going to carry it loosely uh from the pouch that you're carrying it in and i'm doing that here as i have done before in the past with my other pouches only difference is like i said this one will be a part of the wrap i really like that y'all so you've got a built-in tobacco pouch in the wrap I hope you do like that, Mr. Danny. Um, I'm certainly excited about it, and I hope you are too. If not, you can just go ahead and still throw a tin of tobacco in there and just be a lined pocket, um, or whatever you choose to do. Now, here is uh, the lighter pipe cleaner uh, tamper pocket area. I decided to go with these black zippers, um, mainly just to... Uh, do something different than Mr. Dennis. Mr. Dennis has a brown zipper in his. I decided to use these black ones with the ring style zipper pull on them. Um, like I said, to make them different. Um, I like these zippers. It's it's a it's a metal zipper versus a nylon zipper. Um, so it doesn't glide as nice and smooth as a nylon zipper, but it definitely gives you that feel that hey, this guy is heavy duty. And I personally like that. Um, let's continue on. So here is, I am sewing the zipper in place, as you can see right there. And now this is showing you the other side. Like I said, I was going to go ahead and line it with a liner uh, for the tobacco pouch pocket slash pocket or pocket slash tobacco pouch. There you go. All right. <laughs> Other way, y'all. This so you can see the liner, the nice shiny liner underneath there. I went ahead and used some of the double-sided tape uh, between the leather and the liner. It's going to help it stay better while, of course, I am sewing it, and um, it helps a little bit in the end too. Okay, here is uh, I'm sewing on the uh, my little my little stamp right there, uh, right there. So. Now here is uh, what Mr. Danny's flap looks like, and I like it. I really do. Um, I hope Mr. Danny doesn't care, but I took the took the opportunity to put some uh, stars on there. Um, normally here in Texas, I would put one star, <laughs> uh, but since Mr. Danny does not live in Texas, I put two stars. 
um, just to kind of give it some more mm, something else to look at on the flap. I did go ahead and put Mr. Danny's name in the middle there. I used a different font than Mr. Dennis, uh, just like I said, so things will look different. And of course, the shape of it too. <clears throat> Um, this right here, I am cutting out the area for the pipes. This is where the pipes will sit. And I like to give it a nice little half moon cut. Um, just so it's e easier to know where the pipe is going to, you know, stab in at. And to grab it out. Um, and cosmetically, it's it looks pretty good. Right here, I am making the buckle area for Mr. Danny's uh, wrap right here. And you can see I got my template out there. Show me where to cut. There is the piece when it's done, right there. Uh, let's bring it up so you can see that. And I'm sewing it in place right here. Some of these things you have to sew in prior to doing other things. If you don't, ask me how I know, y'all. <laughs> um, but I have learned my lesson. And um, got to sew certain things on the outside first before you sew things on the inside. And here we go. I am uh, sewing on the, the uh, pipe pocket area. Um, and I got the snap right here in the middle of it. Um, now, I didn't. This, this is, um, I don't know if I explained this on the other wrap. But you'll notice that I did not sew uh, right straight down the middle on these tobacco pipe areas uh, because let's just say um, you had a a bent apple with a decently long stem um, well maybe you need to curve that stem into the other area of the pocket uh, for the pipe to fit um, so I, I kind of thought of it that way now I could have sewed just straight down the middle but I thought Having this little area down here for your stem to kind of reach over into the other area um, might be something that's needed. I don't know. We'll find out. Either way, the two pipes will be separated in the pocket, and we're good to go. Uh, see, now that shows you right here. So uh, I got two Savinelli's in here right now. I got my Bing's Favorite and my Alligator Series, uh, which is basically an Apple King Size. I think it's a three, a 620. Eh, doesn't matter, y'all. Um, but it's the king size. I uh, love these pipes, good pipes. And uh, when the flap goes down, snaps and works out real well. Um, that shows you how the flap's going to come down over them. The pipes are underneath there, so you can see that. And Mr. Danny can snap that down in place. And this just, as Mr. Danny's traveling... Uh, and he has it all folded up. It just keeps, um, for one thing, keeps the pipes from falling out if they should do that. Um, and then protects them from anything coming in them on top of them, whatever. Um, and then keeps the zipper pulls and other items that may be outside uh, from scratching the pipe. Maybe you've got a really nice, buffed out, smooth pipe. You definitely don't want any scratches in it. Well, this flap right here uh, takes care of all that. Now, I told you about I was making the tobacco pouch area. This here is showing you that happening right now. I'm getting ready to sew it on. So you see both sides are um, protected with the liner. And I'll sew all that together. Back here, making the belt area. And um, using my template there. Now, I did go ahead and bring uh, the dark brown uh, outside to accompany the lighter tan uh, suede uh, to give you a little bit of a, you know, contrast there. Um, same thing I did on Mr. Dennis's uh, wrap. So, put a little different accompaniments, embellishments on, um, on Mr. Danny's pipe, uh, pipe wrap versus Mr. Dennis, but they both have stuff going on here in the corners. Just kind of, you know, it's nice, y'all. It just makes it look nice in the end um, when it's all done up. Here is a picture showing you of the uh, Mr. Danny's 
uh, pipe wrap getting all loaded up there. Um, I've got a Peterson and a Rossi, one of my, my Rossi uh, poker pipe right there, and a Peterson dongle Rocky right there in the pocket area. Uh, and of course, loaded up with the pipe cleaners, tampers, lighters. Y'all can see that. And a tin of tobacco over here. Um, or, like I said, uh, Mr. Danny can choose to put loose tobacco in there, zip it up, good to go. Um, his choice, whatever you want to do, Mr. Danny, is up to you. Uh, this shows you it all folded up with those same items in there. So when it's all bulked up, you know, this is what it's going to look like. See it there on its side. There's the back side there where it's been buckled up. Now I went ahead and set out both uh, pipe wraps uh, just so you can see that they're different, but relatively they are the same size. Um, yeah, except for there are some differences. Uh, the buckle uh, for Mr. Dennis's pipe wrap is on the right side. The buckle for Mr. Danny's is on the left side. Um, the tobacco area uh, is on the on the left side for Mr. Dennis and right side for uh, Mr. Danny. So they've got differences and the flaps, of course, are monogrammed with their names and the flaps are made differently. So the essence of the wraps are basically the same. However, they have little nuances here and there uh, to show you that they're not. Um, they're not the same. Um, so I do enjoy doing things like that. Sometimes, like I said, I don't keep templates, but I do keep a memory. And I may decide to make another trifold someday, and I'll probably remember that uh, I did it at 21 inches. And then from there, I'll, I'll know how to measure and uh, go from that point. Um, it seems like this style of wrap um, is just the right size without being too big, too small, it's perfect, fits in the hand. Um, yeah, so that's it for that, y'all. Let's get out to the talking screen, and I will go ahead and uh, show you these uh, wraps in person. I did have fun making these, y'all. It, it, is, it is fun, and it is nice going from one wrap to another um, in a relatively you know close proximity of time. And realizing, well, I did this on the last wrap. I could do it differently on this wrap. Um, so that was nice to be able to have that option. Uh, a lot of times when I'm building stuff, you know, I'm only building one of them. Build it, done. It goes out the door. Uh, but in this case, I had two back to back. And I was able to gather inspiration from one to the other. Um, let me get this pipe lit up, y'all. That's the only thing um, that kind of sucks about being a, a content creator is while everybody else is at home smoking their pipe, I got to jabber my jaws and to entertain y'all, I don't get to smoke my pipe. <laughs> Pardon me now if I light it up. Yes, sir. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, so I told you I'm going to go ahead and show you these. Um, they are done. I kind of am glad that they're done. I've got, I've been so busy, y'all. I got a lot of things to do. I still, I had to repair my pig pen, um, last, yesterday. Had a lot, some, a lot of repairs out in my livestock area. Um, yeah, and my cows aren't really behaving too much. And they're tearing stuff up. Any of y'all that have owned cows, cattle, um, you'll know that if there's something to tear up, they're going to tear it up. Same thing with pigs. If there's a hole to be dug and they lay in it, they're going to do that. <laughs> um, horses, they kind of, you know, I don't, I mean... 
if there's a low hanging tree, they'll they'll eat leaves off the tree. But other than that, they really don't tear stuff up. Not like cows and not like pigs or goats. Um, yeah. Um, chickens will get out and kind of scratch your yard up. But horses, not so much. Horses just kind of, yeah. So if I had to pick something that doesn't destroy stuff, it'd be a horse. My wife's horse does not does not destroy stuff well i take that back he did stomp at the chicken coop one time because he wanted at their food um and he kind of dented the door into the chicken coop i kind of got upset on that one i let him know <laughs> but other than that not he's fine he's fine but so lots of things to do around a homestead y'all I know Mr. Ronnie used to have a homestead, so he understands. Um, if any of you out there are homesteading, you definitely understand. Uh, there's always work to be done, um, but it pays off in the end, y'all. Uh, the lifestyle, uh, <clears throat> the food that you gain from it, the peace of mind of knowing that you're growing your own food, eating your own food, um, it, it, it gives you a lot more security and a lot of peace of mind. Um, I certainly do enjoy it, and I hope I can do it uh, until the day I die. Um, you know, could come a day where I can't handle all the work. Maybe I'll be fortunate enough to have a, a grandson that can help me out. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I need to put that bug in my children's ears. Yes, sir. Um... Right now, I have a granddaughter, but you don't really expect your granddaughter to do stuff like that. Not to say they don't, because they do. Uh, women can work just as hard as a man on a homestead, that's for sure. Um, but uh, you definitely stereotypically think of a man-child uh, doing stuff like that. I know I certainly did growing up. Um, but let me get up to these wraps, y'all. Let me show you these. I won't keep you too much longer because uh, y'all know I can jab my jaws. So let's go ahead and show you Mr. Dennis's wrap first. Um, this is his. Nice and folded up. Um, like I said, did some embellishments here on the outside uh, to kind of go with the belt as it comes around and sews in this area right there. Just like that. Um, so unbuckle it now i did take and uh, brought some of that red outside and i put that in the underside of the belt so brown on the outside and the burgundy wine color um, on the bottom side as you unfold this thing there you go um you can see it there then like i said you can unsnap throw your pipes in there anything you want need one of the pockets this right here pocket is designed for the tins of tobacco and then pipe cleaners and other paraphernalia on this side load it up go ahead flap it snap it and um fold it up go ahead and buckle it up there it is all done up good to go so like i said once it's bulk once it's done up it's about the size of a small book y'all um so definitely something um you can carry in your hand uh, now there have been wraps that i have made in the past where i would put uh two rings um and then made a carrying shoulder strap for it um those i like to do those on my hunting wraps let's say i make a hunter's themed wrap um so if you're out you know hunting or you're out in the woods um you may want to just go ahead and uh either attach this to a moly on your backpack or you know sling it across your side while you're carrying your weapon whatever um that would be appropriate in this case i didn't do that on these wraps because these basically sit in the hand and um, either way, you can still take it hunting, still take it fishing. 
um, just take and throw it in your in your your rucksack or whatever you're taking with you, or carry it like this. And like I said, you get fish guts or you know night crawler guts, dirt, whatever fish slime all you know on this you know uh, suede. Um, you can wipe it off, get it off, uh, and it's just going to add to the character of the wrap. I know many of you are thinking, Johnny, we wouldn't do that. <laughs> well, let me tell you, y'all, I wouldn't do it either, but accidents happen. And eventually, it um, adds to the character of the leather. Um, as you can tell, I think you can see it right here. So I didn't protect. This here is my tobacco pouch. You can see I got little a uh, spot right there where I may have dripped some coffee on it. Um, some darker edges from me holding on to it on um, both sides. Here's another stain right here. I may have dropped coffee on it because I set this down on my toolbox and while I'm at work and I'll drink, take a drink of coffee. Maybe some coffee dripped on it. I don't know. I can't remember. But it just all adds to the character, y'all. That's what I love about leather. Um, especially on an everyday item. Um... And it's got a story to tell, that's for sure. Let's get on to Mr. Danny's wrap. Basically the same thing, like I said, um, as Mr. Dennis's. Little small nuances that are different. Um, the corners here on Mr. Dennis's wrap are nice and round. I chose not to do that on Mr. Danny's. Because uh, mainly it kind of went with the little bit of embellishment that I put there. Oh, it looks like an arrow, in a way. On both sides um, so little nuances that make it look different um, but the buckle is still the same way um, now I do like the buckles on that I chose they have the rollers on them these little rollers right here so as you're pulling through it just helps it just rolls with it uh, it's nice very nice uh, go ahead and open it up and there we are, basically the same thing uh, as Mr. Uh, Dennis's wrap. Um, but, like I said, on the tobacco area, it has a built-in tobacco pouch. So if Mr. Danny decides he wants to go ahead and put loose tobacco, I think you all can see the shininess there. Yeah, this whole thing is lined all the way. Mr. Uh, Danny can go ahead and just take loose tobacco. Maybe he got some Sutliff uh, loose tobacco. Throw it all in there. Zip it up. Um, good to go. Um, and traditionally, and this is how I know, because my grandpa, when he smoked his pipe, he used to have a small pouch. It wasn't lined, though, y'all, if I can remember correctly. And it just flapped over. Um, <clears throat> and that's the way he kept it. But no, saying so normally... I remember grandpa would take his pipe he would set it down in the pouch and then reach in grab tobacco put it in his load his pipe up then pull his pipe out and um put his tobacco pouch down i don't think his had a zipper on it y'all i don't remember grandpa zipping his up at all i knew he flapped it over and that was it may have had a tie yeah but this one here has a zipper, y'all, so good to go. Um, and like I said, if uh, Mr. Danny decides to throw a tin of tobacco in here, it fits just perfect. Uh, I doubt that it would hold two of the large tins. It'd probably hold one of the large tins and, say, a square tin, uh, which is known from basically uh, a few makers. In this one here, H&H, &H, they use a lot of the square tin. Probably put a square tin on one side and a round tin uh, on the other side. That would probably work, just like that. Or, definitely two of these square tins would fit perfect. Um, or loose tobacco. It's great that this wrap has that option. Mr. Danny can do a number of things uh, when it comes to carrying tobacco. Put it in a Ziploc bag, put it in tens, put it in loose, whatever he wants. I think that's really cool, y'all. And, um, you know, in hindsight, I thought, well, man, I should have done that with Mr. Dennis. But Mr. Dennis actually did request uh, that I make his 
um, that uh, size so his two pocket tins uh, would go in there. So I, I did what Mr. Dennis wanted. But going forward, I definitely know that this works now. I'm going to offer that to anybody uh, in the future when I make wraps. Um, and you can see the nice uh, Mr. Danny uh, snap area right here. Anyway, like I said, y'all, I enjoyed uh, being creative, making these wraps. Um, we'll get those out here as soon as possible. Mr. Dennis, I know I have your address and one of your emails. For some reason, I've lost it or something. I'll, I'll let you know. Um, I know, Mr. Danny, you gave me your address here recently, so I'm good to go there. We'll get these things out to you. Um, normally, snail mail, it takes anywhere from three to five days to make it. Uh, to where you are at and um, then you'll get them all I ask is just send me an email back tell me what you think that helps me uh, learn for the future maybe you say Johnny um, it's great or whatever but this or I would have added that what and it's great I like constructive criticism y'all I can take it um, it's it's a building tool in my opinion helps me to learn um, or maybe you like it just the way it is. That's fine too. Just let me know. That's all I ask in return. Um, and um, that makes me smile. Uh, let's get out here, y'all. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, going forward, um, let me know what you all want to see in the next project here. Do we want to do some tampers with the built-in dottle picks? Uh, Mr. Dennis, you know about those. Um, do we want to do some cob stems? Um, yeah. Here's my little cob. I kind of made it into a poker, but I made the stem for it. Nice stem for it. Fishtail versus uh, P-Lip. You know what? Those of you that have been watching my channel for quite some time, you know uh, that I've built a decent amount of cob stems. And like I said, I could... I can build any stem I want, but cob stems are easy. Everybody's got a Mearsham cob. Um, so if I build one here, 99% of the time, it's going to fix your pipe. Uh, if you tell me, Johnny, um, I've got a Savinelli, this, that, king size, blah, 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 and I don't have that pipe to measure and fit right, um, that's where I, I, I really can't make, I don't want to make, um, a new stem for something like that. You get it and then find out, ah, it just doesn't fit, Johnny. Whatever. Um, that's why I make it for the cobs. Actually, you know, I could tell you what pipes I have, mainstream pipes. And if anybody wanted, say, a stem made for, um, you know, a Peterson uh, Rocky Dongle, I could probably do that. Um, uh, Savinelli uh, Alligator Series King Size, like I showed you. Uh, Bing's Favorite. Um, a Rossi Poker. Uh, Molina Poker. Um, Morgan Bones. Uh, Dublin. Um, that's a possibility. And we'll think about that in the future. Um, but we also have pipe stands that we can do. Um, here's one I got sitting on the old table right now. Um, so the pipe stands, of course, um, this is just a basic pipe stand, uh, the, uh, tobacco valets. We could also do tobacco valets. So stems, tampers, uh, rests, and valets. There's four more projects, uh, that we could do here, uh, as, you know, the wheel goes around, uh, in the future. Um, if any of y'all would like to see a certain project done, um, let me know. And the more people that vote on, say, stems or tampers, whatever, then that will sway me towards our next project. Um, and then, of course, in the end, we give it away. But y'all take care of yourselves. Um, the heat has not left us here in Dallas. I think we're 90, 91 degrees today really humid yesterday it was amazing how humid it was um i still got out there and work sweated my ass off <laughs> um like we do um 
But I hope everything is going well in your neck of the woods. I hope that life is treating you as good as it can. Um, but y'all, until next time, take care of yourselves, and we'll see you. Pack a bowl, my friend. And don't forget to pass the plan. Pack it up, my friend. me that blend, would you?